faster than a speeding bullet. Check. More powerful than a locomotive. At least more powerful than what Marvel was bringing to the table. Able to lead tall buildings. Mood point when you can fly. Through it all, it's still Superman. Welcome back to They Call Me Uncle. We took a long, oh god, so long weekend watching the Man of Steel's three defining films. Superman the Movie, Superman Returns, and Man of Steel. At the very end, we even tacked on Batman vs. Superman. But our willpower caved completely before we could get to Justice League. So who Superman was the most super? Christopher Reeve? Brandon Routh? Or Henry Cavill? Did any of them pull off the famous non-disguise of those glasses? What about Lois Lane, ace way? reporter who sucks at spelling? How do you spell massacre? How many apps are there in Catastrophic? None. Margot Kidder, Kate Bosworth, or Amy Adams? Then there's the baddies, Gene Hatman and Terrence Stamp, sorta. Kevin Spacey, Michael Shannon and Jesse Eisenberg and Michael Shannon's corpse. I've identified the host as. And for a little more sex appeal, Ava Teschmacher, the henchwoman for Lex Luthor, Kitty Kowalski, oh, another henchwoman for another Lex Luthor, Feora Ull, who is not a henchwoman for Zod and will rip your damn spine out for saying so, and finally, the debut of Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. Back in 1978, as the tagline promises, Superman the movie will have you believe a man can fly, at least better than Shazam could but it will not convince you he can run. We've already ranked the movies and their similarity to Superman's origin story in Action Number 1 and Superman Number 1. Donner's Superman came out on top in that list, even if Marlon Brando can't pronounce Krypton. But the planet Krypton, survivor of the planet Krypton, down of the red Krypton sun. One of the first big screen superhero movies at least as far as a then-teenaged Uncle Morgan is concerned. It had solid casting, a cool 70s sci-fi opener, and a truly bizarre evil scheme where Lex Luthor and his gang intend to kill millions of people. Millions of innocent people would be killed. In what amounts to a real estate swindle. Reeves' version of Superman and all his powers were the peak of cinematic technology. In 1978, Scratch that, the peak of non-Star Wars cinematic technology, anyway. The movie does creak a bit with age. Lois's death and within minutes resurrection started a trend in fake-out deaths that would poison the comic book industry forever, and especially the comic book film. Looking at you, Marvel. All told, though, it scored plenty of three- and four-star moments. And John Williams' score is just icing on the cake. 3.2 Following three more Christopher Reeve Superman flicks, those suckers deserve a whole other video of their own, and a 19-year gap, we get Superman Returns. The film reduces entire hours of exposition and other projects to a single title screen, and evokes Superman's origins by having him crash land in Smallville after five years in space. It tries really hard to be a spiritual successor, if not an outright sequel to Donner's movie, to the point of reusing then 30-year-old footage of Marlon Brando. Lex Luthor's master plan is even the same, pretty much. You're not seeing the big picture here, Miss Lane. Just making land instead of destroying it. Not just an island, an entirely new continent. What starts off as a touching homage becomes a faintly pathetic recreation of a better movie. Superman Returns becomes Superman Broods, which is more Batman's thing, but at least he does it photogenically. Brandon Routh is underrated as Superman, but might actually be our favorite version of Clark Kent. Kate Bosworth, however, we routinely forgot was even in it. During his voyage into space, she moves on with Cyclops. Cyclops. which has never gone wrong for Cyclops before. No! Strike us dead, we hate to say it, but Kevin Spacey was a really good Lex Luthor. 
bringing just the right amount of Jeff Bezosian smugness to the role. Superman certainly lifts a whole lot of heavy things, but these were about it as far as action highlights go. The twist that Lois and Clark had a son together was less foreshadowed than bluntly telegraphed. For a slow downer of a movie made up of three star moments, it gets a 3.12. Man of Steel was only seven years after Superman Returns, which made all the difference in the world for its special effects budget. Zack Snyder's fondness for collateral damage does lend itself to Superman, though Superman's famous optimism kind of clashes with modern DC's inherently bleak view of human nature. The film skipped Donner's five straight minutes of opening credits in favor of expanding Superman's origins, complete with an actor who can actually pronounce Krypton. Who came from Krypton? With its production design and action, the prologue alone could have been its own badass short film. The movie overall got our highest number of four stars, but gained our only universal two star for Kevin Costner's stupidly avoidable death just nailed himself right to that cross there. The dust up in Smallville got four stars from all of us, but it just kept going, and going, and going, and then going some more, and in a way kept going into Batman vs Superman, wounding its score, and resulting in 3.17. We had planned to do just a three, but Mason talked us into a fourth. Little bastard. Iron Man, I mean Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice, ultimate cut of the kingdom of the planet of the apes. One of the most divisive comic book movies ever made. As it's a direct sequel to Man of Steel, Superman's origin is skipped in favor of Batman's origin. Long as that movie was, it didn't skimp on the action. It also deserves credit for paying at least a little attention to the comics. Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor has a far, far more complicated plan, but he lacks the camp flavor of Gene Hatman, the actual menace of Kevin Spacey, and instead goes for straight up crazy. The introduction of Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman was a definite highlight. And we'll never turn down a Batmobile with chain guns. Though Batman's no-kill rule is chucked completely out the window by this point. The titular fight between Batman and Superman does entertain. Once you get over Batman's exposed, very punchable chin. And Martha. Save Martha! Why did you say that name? Oh god, Martha. Using General Zod's corpse to create Doomsday was a slick idea, but anyone with a passing knowledge of the comics will know it'll lead to Superman's death and his even more inevitable revival in Justice League. Which itself should have been called Superman Returns. With a higher concentration of three and four star moments, our score comes out 3.29. Before we rank them with our master list, the breakdown goes as follows. Fourth with 3.12, Superman Returns. Brandon Routh and Kevin Spacey, good. Kate Bosworth, was in it. Third with 1.7, Man of Steel. Best overall casting and certainly the best effects, but should have just stopped about here. Second with 3.2 is Superman the Movie. Closest to the comics, and captures the sense of fun and optimism from a long gone era of filmmaking. First with 3.29 is the bonus movie. Batman vs Superman, Dawn of Justice. We had our doubts about Ben Affleck as Batman, considering his last superhero movie. No further back. That one. But his Batman, Cavill's Superman, and Godot's Wonder Woman were the heart and soul of this one. She with you? I thought she was with you. 
And now for the segment we like to call Dare to Compare. Did the DC movies beat out the Marvel ones? Let's find out. Superman Returns lands at fifth place in the superhero genre, above Fantastic Four 94 and 2015. Man of Steel lands at fourth place. Superman the Movie lands at third. And Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice Ultimate Cut lands at second, behind Fantastic 405. And there you have it. Marvel remains at the top of our list. For now. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.